In this video from a clinic, we take a little deeper look at an exercise to help your horse relax, soften, and align his body. In this case, this horse softens well, relaxes well, but rotates his hindquarters each time he stops, moving his body out of alignment. Here's how we fix that. This will be familiar to all of you folks who've been to clinics with me before, and that's really most of the people. Uh, the first thing I like to see, and this is the beginning of seeing if your horse is responsive, seeing if they're relaxed, is just to see if you can tip their nose, not real far. And see this mare, she's a three-year-old. Uh, she's really never been to town before. So when I take a hold of her face, at home, she just stands there like that. Here, understandably, she's saying, well, I got a little more anxiety, so when you take a hold of me, I may need to move my feet. I'm not trying to stop them from doing that. I'm trying to let them find a way to stop doing it. It also gets them softer. Now, how's this big guy doing on this? You're pretty meticulous about this stuff. Don't, don't wiggle your hands. You're, 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 yes, he's giving real well. But don't even bend him that far then. If, if he wants to tip his ear, sometimes you can correct that, even though it seems backwards, by picking up on the other rein and just sort of stabilizing his head. But you can also fix it by not bending quite so much. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But just remember, you, you and it's from riding young horses. I've been there. I do it. You help. Yeah. He needs to learn to help himself. Because yeah. he's, what, four now? Yeah. And not like he's an old veteran, but he knows what he's doing. The next thing I'll do as we work, walk through this relax, build rhythm, and build responsiveness is doing that from a walk. So you're walking along and you bend your horse to the left and then you wait them out until they stop without jamming into the ground. And hold until they soften up. See, she's leaning into me. She's still leaning, so. So she sensed something off to the right that she's interested in, so I'm just gonna hold her however long it takes for her to soften up. There. Now you probably noticed that she was pretty nice and soft when I was doing it out of a standstill. And even though this is just a walk, this roughly triples the degree of difficulty. You know, because you've got motion and you've got the bend in the course of the motion. But what I want is to get the horse to where they get soft and relax. Instead of speeding up, instead of rebelling, instead of getting troubled, they just soften up and relax. And it should get like that was easier this time than the first time. And you just go ahead and do that the other way. And you can do it this out of a trot. You can do it out of a lope. But here's the net result is they begin to find your use of the bridle relaxing. They begin to think in terms of softening when you take a hold of the bridle instead of getting stiff and getting troubled. Mr. Hancock, Now he did an interesting thing there. When you took his head, he stopped his front end and he rotated his back end more motion than his front end. So what I would say when they do that, that's a brace. 
So if he starts to move his back end, instead of stopping gradually from a walk that is using all four corners equally, then don't stop. Walk forward a few more strides until he adjusts that and then try again. So it's a little bit like horses that have been one rein stopped a lot and had their rear end disengaged will do what he just did. And it becomes a problem because it drops them on their front end. So go ahead and try that again. Same direction. I always lose track of what direction it was, but I'll trust you. Now walk him forward. See that hind end? His hind end was moving more than his front end. Now let him. See, he still wants to move that front end, or that hind end more. And so you want to keep him walking until he just finds that stop and gets soft, but doesn't over move with his back end. That was perfect timing, perfect timing. Good. So it, does, it isn't about getting him stopped. We know he'll stop. There, that worked. See the difference? Yeah. And it's very subtle, yeah. but it, it will make a difference in how he uses his back end if he doesn't learn to default to using the front end when you do that. Uh, that's, that's the bone I pick with the people who say, the way you get your horse broke is to one rein stop and disengage until they give up all of that excess energy. Well, if you do it this way, you're keeping them more balanced. Go ahead and try him the other way. It will be interesting to see if he does the same thing both ways. Not near as much this way. That was a very nice catch because I saw that he was starting to, to do that a little. So you just moved him up and you timed the stop because he's very willing to stop. Go ahead, walk him up and do it that direction again, but that worked out pretty nicely. Yep, a little more, a step him forward, a couple steps. See that back end starting to over, over move? There you go. That, that was really, really nicely done. Because you had to support him and keep him moving, but you didn't want to rattle him. You didn't want to punish him. You just kept him moving until he was in a more symmetrical stride back to front, right to left. So let's get greedy and do it from a trot. That was, he, he wanted to do the over move with his back end less because he had more forward motion. He did it a little and you caught it to where if I hadn't known what I was looking at, I wouldn't have known you helped him. That, that was good. Try him the other direction. Yeah, to move him. Yeah, that's perfect because he was starting to swing his back in. Take yeah, take your time because better to do it once correctly than do it twenty times half halfway. Just hold him for a second, because he's still there. Yeah, he just, he, he got fine, yep. And you had enough slack out that he can only give you so much. So here's one of the things that makes that symmet symmetrical movement so important, is someday you're gonna wanna turn this, teach this horse to turn and, and maybe spin. If he is in that habit, 
he's either going to turn on the front end or he's going to bottle spin. He's going to turn in the middle. But if you get him moving symmetrical and then you say move your shoulder over, he'll move his shoulder over and all of a sudden he's stepping around. So what I like to do when it's possible is to get way upstream like this and say here's a problem that could be a bigger problem six months from now if we start to put a little spin on it. Right. Don't try to fix it in the spin when it declares itself there. Right. Fix it now. Okay.